Welcome to another contribution for Utopian. Let's continue with the LibreOffice macros course. We will continue talking about the manipulation of cells. For that, I have already prepared a book and some procedures. First, we will learn to change the edges of a cell. Let's see the following procedure. In this procedure, I declare the ODoc, OSheet, and OCell objects. To ODoc, I assigned the active book. To OSheet, I assigned the first page of the active book. The OCell object is assigned a range, which is sent to call by its name, the range VA to C12. That is this range. The borderline structure is used which will allow acquiring the necessary properties to make the assignment of characteristics to each of the edges. The first characteristics that we will use will be the color of the edge. For this, we will use the property color of the table. To make the choice of the color, we use the RGB function. This function needs three arguments. The first one is the red level, the next the green level, and the last one the blue level. Through the different levels, we will obtain the color palette. Each value goes from 0 to 254. In this case, the red level is assigned the value 0, the green level the value 254, and the blue level the value 0. Therefore, we are assigning the green color. The assignment can be done on a single cell or above all arranged as in this case. To color the top edge, we will use the top border property, assigning the O border structure that we previously created. Let's execute the procedure. As you can see, the macro has not marked the edges of the indicated area. This occurs because the width of the border is automatically defined at zero. If we want the edge to be appreciated, we must give the edge with a non-zero value. To assign a thickness to the edge, we will use the outer line property of the O border structure. In this example, we will assign a value of 50. Let's run again. Now the upper edge of the range has been colored green. We can change the color. We are going to grab the blue color on the edge. We put 0, 0 and 254. Let's execute the procedure. Now the top edge is blue. To color the other edge we will use the top border, left border, right border and bottom border properties. Let's see the result after doing the assignation to each edge. As you can appreciate now, all the edges have been colored. The thickness of the edge is relatively free. We can assign, for example, a value of 500. Let's execute the procedure. Now, as you can see, the edges have gained the indicated thickness. Also, they have covered the contents of the cells because the edges are too thick. In the following procedure, I will show you how to fill a cell. We will use the OCell object and the ODoc object. We again assign the active book to the ODoc object. Now to OCell, we will assign the cell with position 1,0, that is cell B1. First, we introduce the text string Hello Utopian. Later, to make the fill, we will use the property setBackColor. To assign the color, we will help again using the RGB function, we choose the color green. Let's execute the procedure. We have the expected result. The text string and the green background have appeared in cell B1. If we want to eliminate the background color, we will have to use the is cell background transparent property. If the value of this property is 1, that means that the background is transparent. Therefore, the previously assigned color will disappear. Let's execute the procedure. Automatically, the color disappears.
In the following procedure, we will learn to change the horizontal alignment. We will use the cell B1 again with the text string text. We will help ourselves with the orijustified property of the cell. For the alignments, we will use this enumeration. First, we will use the center option. Let's execute. As you can see, the text has been centered. Now, let's test the left alignment. It has aligned correctly. Dot right correctly aligns us to the right. To justify, we will use dot block. In this case, it is not noticeable, since we have only one word. Finally, for the text to be repeated again and again until the cell is completely filled, we will use the repeat option. Let's execute. Now, the text has been repeated until the cell is completely filled. Now, let's explore the vertical alignment. For this, we will use the bird justify property. We also use the structure com.sun.star.table.cellbirdjustify. To appreciate the change correctly, we will increase the height of the cells. As shown, the default alignment is bottom. If we execute with the bottom option, we don't notice any change. Let's try center. Finally, we are going to try top. As you appreciate, the text is at the top of the cell. In the following procedure, we will learn to add an indentation. In this case, we will use the para indent property. The value that we assign to this property will have its equivalence in millimeters when multiplied by 0 0.01. If the value is left at 0, there will be no indentation. Let's execute to prove it. Now, let's try a value of 100. This corresponds to an indentation of 1 millimeter. Let's execute the procedure. If we put 500, it will move 5 millimeters. As you can see, the indentation has been correct. Now I will show you how to get the text of a cell to fill several lines. By default, the text occupies a single line. To change that behavior, we will use the east text wrap property. The default value of this property is 0, therefore, if we execute assigning the value 0, the text will occupy a single line. In this case, as usual, the text occupies the next cell, since the next cell has no content. In case of having a content, the text is cut. Now, let's assign the value 1 to the is text wrapped property. The value 1 refers to true. Let's execute the procedure. Now the text occupies more than one line. In the following procedure, I will show you how to change the orientation of a text. For this, we will use the orientation property of the cell or range. We will use the cell orientation property of the com.sun.star.table structure. We have four different options. Standard, top bottom, bottom top, and stack. Let's use the standard option first, which will not make any changes. Using the top bottom option, the text is written from top to bottom. Through bottom top, we obtain the inverse result. With stacked, the text is written using one letter for each line. You may have to think that standard should return the text to the initial form. However, it doesn't happen that way. To return to the initial format, we will use the rotate angle property with the value 0. In this way, we are establishing a rotation of 0 degrees. Let's execute the procedure. Rotate angle will allow you to rotate the text. The value assigned 
to this property will represent a measure in degrees after dividing it by 100. We must remember that a complete turn has 360 degrees, which corresponds to a value of 36,000. Let's assign the value 1000, which corresponds to 10 degrees. This rotation is assigned to the cell 1,5, that is column B and row 6. As you can see, the rotation has been carried out because the previous procedure had already been carried out. We return the rotation to zero now. This returns to the default format. Now we will rotate 5 degrees. For them, we assign the value 500. As you can see, the cell has left. This is due to the reference rotation. To change the rotation reference, we will use the rotate reference property of the cell and some of the possible values of the structure com.sun.start.table.cellbird.justify. Let's first use a rotation reference to the center. Now a rotation referenced to the top. Finally, a rotation reference to bottom. In this last example, we will print the dimensions and position of a cell. We will use the cell with position 1,0, that is cell B1. We can print the position in X, the position in Y, the width and the height. For this, we will use the following properties. It shows us a position in X of 22 millimeters. This is because there are 22 millimeters of the beginning of the sheet. The position in Y is 0 millimeters. This is the measurement from the top of the sheet. The result, as is expected, sign it is the first cell of the column. The width of the cell is 22 millimeters and the height is 46 millimeters. It corresponds to what we visually appreciate since approximately the height is twice the width. These properties are read only. If we try to modify them, no change will be obtained. To change the width and height of a cell, the row and the column, structure will have to be changed. That is the subject of another video. I hope this video has been useful for you. See you!